And Microsoft, by leveraging its money, is now forcing a subscription model into it's like a square into a circular hole. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily make sense. And it's not necessarily what people want. And that malign influence, I think, is quite corrosive because now Sony can't ignore this. Sony has to understand it's dealing with a competitor that has no problem taking shit away from it. And that's not the way that the and, and remember, this goes back to the beginning. No offense to Microsoft, but what was their first instinct in the 90s when Xbox started to co come to fruition? What did they try to do? They went and tried to buy Nintendo. That's the first thing they did. Colin Moriarty, you're not as smart as you think you are. And I know that you sit there on these podcasts, you know, throw word things interestingly. You know, this is a guy who, um, you know, he, he has a gr good grasp of the English language. You know, and so when he says that oh, this is malign and is corrosive to the industry, he says this in a way to get people riled up, right? M more specifically, PlayStation fans, since he's a PlayStation guy. But, you know, this is clearly, look, everybody who's protesting against this act, uh, Activision uh, deal, they're the same ones. Like, notice how, how he... How he mentions how how Microsoft tried to buy Nintendo at one point, but notice how he's never he never mentions that when Sony does it. And I'm going to leave an interesting clip that's going to prove me right once and for all in this. But yeah, so so the Colin is you know into a lot of these people since Sony is doing things on a smaller scale, which is what they've always did, purchase games away from other con uh, consoles. Since that's their norm, they're not used to Microsoft doing investing this heavily. Uh, they're not as uh, taken aback when when Sony does it, but Sony, you know, Street Fighter, Final Fantasy, the Spider-Man and the Wolverine IP. Now, I mean, <laughs> hell, going back to the days, uh, you know, l let's not forget games like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil uh, didn't start on PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? And and look, and as this clip I'm going to show you uh, says, right. When Sony Sony didn't have have any in the industry, what did they do? They spent millions, millions of dollars on exclusive. Sega, they already had their arcade games, but Sony, what do they have? They don't have a genius developer or arcade games they're making, so they had to find software somewhere. We knew that in order to be successful, we had to capture the hearts and minds of the developers and the publishers equally. So what they did was they went on a very aggressive campaign to all the developers. At first, a lot of developers were dead set against it, mainly because it was high technology, it was 3D. And a lot of game companies were still making 2D games. And they said, that's going to be so expensive to make 3D games. No way we can afford it, and it's going to be very hard. Sony does everything it can to round up third-party developers to support the PlayStation, and is able to sign 250 in Japan alone. And so what he's doing and what a lot of these guys are doing now is that they're pushing this lie that Sony, quote unquote, did it the right way. Now, first of all, moralizing business practice in general is stupid. You know what I'm saying? Uh, outside of the extremes, you know, this ain't fucking 19. This ain't fucking uh, 1898 where John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil had fucking 100 percent of the oil market. All right. And Teddy Roosevelt had to break them motherfuckers up. All right. After this passes, Microsoft is going to have 10%, 10%, all right, 10%, maybe a little over 10% of the gaming market that they own. That's it. That's not close to a monopoly. And not only that, you know, as you're going to see in this, as you're going to see when I leave proof, Sony purchased uh, all their, every studio that these people praise, Sony purchased them motherfuckers, man. So, so, um, so when Colin goes back to bitching, uh, uh, you know, like he did, where he was like, "Oh, so, so, why would Microsoft?" Oh, and oh, that's another thing. He trying to push this narrative that that the Microsoft um, developers don't make sense to their goal, but motherfucker, all they're doing is broadening their appeal. Now Microsoft is the home of first-person shooters, third-person shooters, Western RPGs, uh, M M MOBA games, multiplayer games, racing games. Now they're a they're not. We're long ways from the 360 days when the 360 was called the shooter box or the dude bro box, right? All because of stuff like this. So, you know, so, so when I see Colin once again spew this lie out, I have to call it out, you know, be, because again, he's, look, 
Colin, if you don't know the history of your own brand that you represent, then you don't deserve your platform. All right. If you don't know that Sony pushed Sega out gaming, then you don't know your own fucking platform. If you don't think when Sony was making deals to keep Street Fighter 2, one of the most popular fighting games series ever, off Xbox, and that didn't affect Xbox in any way, you don't know what you're talking about. But since it's Microsoft doing it, oh, now you're going to sit there on your soapbox and pretend that, that the, we're at the end of gaming. Um, you do realize companies like Tencent, THQ Nordic, all all own way more studios than Microsoft, right? But no, you you know, for somebody who claims to be a, a libertarian, you sure do hate, you sure do a libertarian capitalist to be specific, you sure do hate capitalism now that Microsoft is practicing it. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. But yeah, I, I had to call Colin Moriarty out on this one because this idea that, that it's what Microsoft is doing is corrosive to gaming is really just him once again throwing a bitch fit like he did over the Bethesda deal. The reality is, we're look, we're in the era of content. These companies need content to keep their services alive. They need it strongly to keep you, the consumer, interested. In. It is what it is on that. And, and uh, you know, this ain't a situation where xbox has cornered the market and sony can't compete you guys first of all you guys brag about sony sales all the fucking time colin so it it's so this isn't this is hell this is even like the 90s where where marcus you know you could only get get office on microsoft products type situation no these games are going to be able on on xbox on pc on your tablet on phone trying to reach you know billions of people basically but yeah, that's my piece on this one. For once again, Colin Moriarty and his stupid take and his lies, because these are lies that he's trying to push on, on, on you. So don't believe it. Don't believe this narrative that, that Xbox, you know, the way Xbox do it is the wrong way, right? They got to cultivate. First of all, they already had relationships with these companies before they purchased them. Secondly, oh, here's another thing. Activision went to Microsoft. Hello, Activision went to Microsoft. All right, <laughs> when they put their stuff up for sale, they fucking went to Microsoft. And, and what, you want Microsoft to, 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 to just be like, oh no, we don't want to purchase you. Stay, keep 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 that toxic Axel Bobby Kotek, you know what I'm saying? No, no, they saw an opportunity and Jake jumped on it, just like any person would, just like any smart business would. And you, you probably know this, but since it's not benefiting PlayStation, you're gonna sit there, throw a fit, and then try to lie to us about how this is bad and corrosive to gaming. Fuck out of here.